Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, I sent you some charts, and actually, uh, what's kind of important here is the, um, uh, actually, we're, we're kind of a review of what we did a little bit on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll take we'll take a look look at chart one. Yep. Which is basically really kind of unchanged. What this uh, second window down from the top is the bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX as uh, a ratio. Yes. And the top window is the... Uh, 10-day average of that RSI, and the uh, chart goes back to 2008 and measures the time when the RSI fell below minus uh, 25. Okay. And currently we're like, uh, uh, or not minus 25, 25 on the RSI, and we're like 15 right now. Uh, so in the past, they always, uh, uh, only one time it failed, and that was in 2013, so there's 10 times that happened over going back uh, uh, about 2008, so quite a few years. So this is about a 9% chance, according, you know, if you do the odds. Sure. A 9% chance that the market is making an intermediate term low right here, right now. And this is a weekly chart, so it gets you close to the bottom. So anyhow, I just want to point that out. It's nothing dramatically happened since Tuesday, but now it's flipped to chart two. Okay. So, okay, so the intermittent term is making a low. Yeah. Now, this is the short-term indicators. The, uh, the bottom window is the 18-day average of the uh, up-down volume percent. Yeah. The next window higher is, is the uh, GDX advanced decline percent. And I, I marked the times in blue where both those were above minus 10, and I marked it in pink when both times were below minus 10. Yes. So uh, we got above uh, end of September, you know, end of August, we got above minus 10 on both and market rattled a little bit. Then it came back down for like a week and a half, a week or about a week. Then we turned around uh, probably about a week ago and we've been in the blue since. So long as this indicator stays in the blue, or above minus 10 on both indicators, the uptrend has started. And I want to point out on also this chart, you know, I got red arrows drawn on both those indicators. Yes, I see that. Yeah, it's kind of a dotted and arrow. So this, so both indicators are making higher highs uh, than the previous high, where GDX so far has made a lower high. What this tells me that the up-down volume and the advanced decline indicators are actually stronger. Uh, it's a it's a bullish divergence. I'll put it that way. Okay. Uh, what, what that predicts, if uh, both since both indicators are above the previous high, that will predict GDX will get above its previous high. Maybe go a lot higher, but that would be the minimum upside target. So it's not a big deal, but we may get to at least mi a minimum of thirty. I'm thinking we're going to do a lot, a lot more. So it's actually now it's flipped to. A, the final or chart number three. Okay. So, so we got a long-term chart, which is chart one giving a buy signal. We got chart two, which is short-term picture giving a buy signal. So now this is the intermediate term. Uh, the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume, and uh, act, really the the bottom one seems to carry the weight. Okay, it, it has the most accuracy, but. This indicator also gave a kind of a, a buy. Probably looks like September sometime. It got, the blue area is when this indicator is above zero, and the, the white area is just below zero. So as long as those indic that in bottom indicator is above zero, those lines, the, the shaded area will be blue. I see that. And uh, yeah, the the. the a couple of days ago, this indicator was like minus six, and now this is at close of yesterday, so this is uh, minus 1.2 as we're sitting right now. With today's rally, I would bet that we're probably above zero today. You know, it's amazing, so, Tim, that gold is not up, and every gold stock is up today. It's like, wow. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah so, so I'm thinking something something's big is happening, 
and it's, uh, it's you know it actually started back in July. Even though July it worked, it's a little bit lower than what July was. Yeah. But the only reason why I point out July is when those indicators at the bottom window gets below minus twenty. Usually that stops decline and market flips sideways. It goes a little bit lower, but basically flips sideways. And we've been going sideways for three months, and now if we can get it get above zero, which we may be doing it today, and hold above zero, uh, you know, we can get a rally that, that, that could last for months. Previous signals of this type have lasted multi-months. Yeah, stay right so there, Tim. I'm thinking something. Stay right, right there. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growl and a prowl with us, folks. We have the Dow Industrials up 360, NASDAQ's up 122, S&Ps are up 39. Tim Ryan going to be coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, up 349. NASDAQ's up 113. S&Ps are up 37. And I have to say hello to my son, Tom, and my grandson, Tommy. They are in Zurich right now, folks, waiting for their flight. Little Tommy, <laughs> they're probably both eating Ben and Jerry's. Picture that. They're in Zurich. It's all over the place. Tommy, you're eating that Ben and Jerry's and Pringles, I bet. you got to love it. We're talking with Tim Ward right now. We are talking markets. Okay, Tim, we are cooking. Hey, Zurich, what, what are they doing in Zurich? What, what is they were, they were in, you know what's so funny about this, Tim? Remember the last time that I saw you, right? You stayed at my house. Tommy was probably, yeah. probably 12 or 13 or who knows. Um, yeah. No, he's in high school, I think. Um, so his best friend from school was getting married in Mallorca. So Tommy was the best man, and he... Um, he took his son to Mallorca, so they've been going for a week. <laughs> wow, and what, what a trip. What a trip, and you should see, he's been sending me pictures. Little Tommy, he's just old enough, now he knows what a road trip is. They've been going all around Zurich. He's been, yeah, it's, it's just hilarious, because unfortunately, they, the flight this morning from Mallorca to Zurich was a hour and a half late, so they missed their connection, but it turned into a great thing because there was a hotel right there, so now they both got to see Zurich. They've been running around Zurich all day. They're going to bed right now, but they're watching TFNN. you got to love it. So they're on the TV watching TFNN. <laughs> what, what's, what's the time change? About it's uh, hours uh, hours? six. It's not bad. It's uh, 9.30 at night. Yeah. Oh, 9.30. Okay. Six, the, six. Yeah, but they got to get some bad. sleep. Yeah, so... Pretty wild, though, wow. huh? I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, watching T. <laughs> yeah. Watching, watching their dad, huh? They're watching you, too. I know. That's what Tommy just said to me. He says, uh, and now we're laying in bed listening to you and Tim Wood. Just took a shower, ready to go to bed. Got to love it. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's, that's great. Isn't that so. crazy? I know, man. I love it. Crazy. Yeah. You got to love it. Um, well, we'll get back to the charts. Uh, yes. I don't know if you have any. I don't know. We can. We can. Well, no. You, uh, I think. I think one of the. the that, thought, you know, as you've we, been teaching. have been walking through this this uh, GDX chart. No, I know. Listen, Tim. As you it, as you've been teaching and it us. And it developed and it developed and it developed and here we are. And here so, we are. No, as you've been teaching us how this works, it's it's pretty amazing because like today, I mean, this divergence is big. I mean, you have the dollar. Normally, if the dollar. The dollar is up more than a half a penny. So the dollar is up a 600 and something ticks, okay? You have gold is only down $2. So normally when the dollar is up that much, I mean, gold would be smoked like $20. And it's not moving. Yeah. And then, of course, you wouldn't have the gold stocks up. That's not even close. And, you know, some of these are really catching a bid. You got Royal Gold up a buck twenty. You got, um, you know... Newmont up 29 cents. You get AEM up 75 cents. You know, copper's moving too. You get uh, Freeport Mac Moran up a buck. You get Pan American Silver. They're, they're moving, man. They're moving. They're, someone's buying them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it should get better. You know, uh, the key is we need to hold above, uh, you know, the zero line. Of yes. Case, which I think we're going to do because, you know, the chart number one says, you know, we should. You know, right. This is an intermediate term bottom that. You know, previous you know the previous signals have lasted a long, long time. So, All right. Guess, you know, time will tell. But and uh, then you know, we can flip to the S and P charts. If okay. And then, uh, well, let's do one more. I want because I want to show them. You're showing us the the Bollinger Bands on the GDX also. So the GDX had been teetering, as you said. You know, the last 
you know, it was above, then it came below, and now that baby's right inside that band again, you know, up above it, up above that middle band. Right, yeah, that's, uh, uh, are you looking at chart number two? No, I just, I just brought it, I just brought an actual chart up, I just, I just made one. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, the Bollinger Bands, I do a lot with them, I mean, John Bollinger, uh, God, this is years ago, back in the mid-90s, I think, I went to a, um, he invited me to uh, in Las Vegas to, to be one of their speakers, and John Bollinger was there. Yeah, and that's the first time he presented the world his Boll Bollinger band. Oh, how cool is and, that? Uh, yeah, and I was there, and he was doing a. Uh, oh, we were speakers at I forgot what um, the the hotel it was. Yeah, but he was there. Uh, Tom McCollin was there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's probably about ten of us. I can't remember everybody, but that's the first time I ever met John, and and you know, he worked a hundred percent. I mean, he was really. Uh, I mean, all he thought about was the market. I don't think he had an outside life other than the market. Yeah, so, no, I'm with you. Right, and, right. He really stumbled onto something, and it works really well in the in the short term time frames, bigger time frames. Uh, Matter of yeah. fact, when it gets outside of the Bollinger Band, either up or lower, you're kind of extended. Right. Uh, uh, and, there's you know, a lot of stuff uh, you can learn from the Bollinger Band. And so, you know what I just did, uh, too? I put it on the weekly, and it's in the middle of on the weekly, too. And, oh, look at this. It's almost ready to go on the monthly. Interesting, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. on the weekly, now it's in the middle. And the monthly, it's just teetering. So, you know, a few more days of this. And it'll be in the middle, too. Pretty wild, man. Cool. Yeah. If tomorrow, like, you know, this last chart we showed was just a 50-day average, you know, most likely we're probably going to be above zero. I don't know for sure. Because it's a 50-day average, you know, some numbers drop off and other numbers uh, add on. But, you know, if the market can hold, if GDX can hold here or move higher, there's probably about at least a 90% chance that, that 50 day average of the up down volume will close above zero, but the key to continue with that rally, it needs to hold above zero. Yes. So that'd be the key. Um, and, and we also. You go back to chart, chart one, you know, that, that chart one, you know, in the past, it, it picked, it picked out some major lows. Right. And uh, so I, I'm thinking if it gets above zero, it's probably going to stay above zero. So right. multi months. And, so and we know. The yeah. early stages yet here. Yeah, and we know, so. folks, and Tim, when the gold stocks stop moving, because it's such a small sector, it doesn't take much once, you know, the game is on. Do you know what I mean? And you know what's cool, yeah. Tim, is that I haven't got any calls, you know? And, you know, the amount of calls that we get in here, you know, I don't want any either, <laughs> because right. that's always an indication. Yes, they're meaning, they're all calling in, they're all agreeing with you, and that's usually a bad sign. Well, <laughs> what happens is that when you don't get any gold calls, that's when you've made a major bottom. When everyone's calling, yep. that's when you made a major top. I mean, it, it's yep. it's like within three days, you know, especially at the tops. If I get in the course of an hour, when if the market really goes, it's like you know you're going to get six. You're going to get more than six calls, but six I can take, and they're all going to be gold calls. And it's like, oh, man, we're at the top again, you know. And at the bottoms, yeah. I mean, the bottom line, I, you know, it's, and, it, and it, we both know it's been dead, so pretty cool, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. stay, you, stay exactly right there. Right. We're going to take so. a quick break, and we're going to come back, folks, and we're going to talk to the S&P with Tim. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim every day. It's a great newsletter. It's Ord, O-R-D. Dash oracle.com. Ord dash oracle.com. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Dow Industrials right now up 347. NASDAQ's up 121. SPs are up 38. Don't eat too much ice cream and Pringles, Tommy. Love you guys. <laughs> Go.